Hi and welcome to our Sunday message. Today my message has a very simple title, Had Enough. So good morning. It's great to connect with you. Next Sunday is an exciting day. 12th of July, we'll be back gathering together in our church building. So come join us at 9.30 a.m. Who has ever had enough? Today I want to check in with John the Baptist and reconnect with our mate Elijah from last week. Who's ever had the opportunity to see blueprints of a building or a construction? They're cool, aren't they? They show you what to expect and what the end product will look like. If you have done life and ministry for a while, you will know like me, the blueprints often change. Plans are put on hold, corrections are made, and things change. Who drew your blueprints? Jesus was comparing Elijah to John the Baptist. And they both had a blueprint of what the kingdom of God would look like, so they thought. But it did not match up the reality of what God actually was doing and what he did. So John the Baptist has preached his way into prison and Jesus is moving ahead with his life and ministry as he continues to reveal who he really is. The Messiah and Son of God, Saviour of the world. So John sends a messenger to ask Jesus, Are you the one or should we look or expect someone else? Is this what it's going to be? Is this what it's going to feel like? Is this what it means to be a Christian? Am I going to have to struggle like this? Is it really going to be like this? Is it really going to be that hard? If you've got a Bible with you today, open to Matthew chapter 11, starting at verse 4. Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. That sounds great to me. But John was not expecting that. When he preached, he preached, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent. John was expecting judgment, but Jesus brought mercy. Jesus came with a hand of healing, not condemnation. You thought people had overlooked you, but Jesus lifts you up and says, come, welcome, come, come as you are. What were you expecting? We have disappointments because our expectations are unrealistic. We're stuck in a la-la land. We often watch movies and if it's a love story, it ends with a wedding and off they go living happily ever after. Did they really? Marriage is hard. It takes work. For some, it may take some help. Then children appear. And they will not always be so wonderful all the time. And this changes the dynamics of a family. And you might say, enough. When the expectation is high or unrealistic, there is room for greater disappointment. 
I'm sure for many of us, there have been some amazing revelations about each other as we've done life together in close proximity. Our mate Elijah, remember him? Expected the rain, but not the resistance. When the drought broke, the battle will be over as well, so he thought. But he needed to learn that more blessings creates more battles. Enlarge our borders, Lord, we pray. We want to see growth. But we don't want the responsibility that comes with that. More people always equals more complexity. 1 Kings 18, 43, if you've still got your Bible there. Go and look towards the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked. There's nothing there, he said. Seven times, Elijah said, go back. The seventh time the servant reported, a cloud as, as, as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. This, this, this small cloud. So Elijah said, go tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds. The wind rose. A heavy rain started falling. For Elijah, now there is the reconciliation between how he thought it would be and how it was. You've got to imagine for three years while he is running during this drought, that he's waiting for God, waiting for him to give the word and the rain will come. When the rain finally comes, they'll repent, they'll turn back to you, they'll do the right thing. They'll see that you are God and nations will follow you. The goal was never about water, but spiritual renewal. So when Jezebel, who promoted the worship of false gods, remember her, she wanted to kill him. I believe his greatest fear was not that he would die, but that nothing would change. That's when it gets hard, isn't it? That's when it's enough. It's not hard to sacrifice when you see the significance of it. You gave your all. You did all you could do. And no one said thank you. We did all we could and still they didn't listen or choose the right way. We invited them in, we prayed for them, we cared for them and they still walked away. Responsibility is a big burden for many of us. Being a pastor carries a big responsibility. Let me be honest. I've had to learn that I must be happy. That I have done all that God gave me to do. All that he called me to achieve. And the rest is up to him and you. I could list many friends who have said, that's enough. I'm done and walked away and shut the door of the church and never returned. Elijah said, I'm done. I don't want this anymore. In all of scripture, I cannot find one time that God gets mad with him. And here he's writing a suicide note when he should be celebrating. And what does God do? Well, according to this story, when prophets run from God and have a meltdown and want to die, yummy, warm, freshly baked rolls appear near your head, cooked by an angel. Ah, oh, the smell of fresh bread. So good. 
It's one of the best spe smells we have, isn't it? The smell of fresh baked bread. Oh, I can smell it now. Yum. Elijah is in a place that God didn't send him to. And the Lord still provides. Praise God for the provision we did not earn. For the mercy we did not deserve. Our God will meet you and provide for you in those unexpected places. When you think he's mad at you, he shows up and brings you joy and restores your life. You had had enough, but God said, no, not yet. Elijah wakes up and finds freshly baked bread beside him. He eats it and he's able to continue on his journey. It's in 1 Kings 19. Friend, it costs us, doesn't it? To be a parent, to be a husband, to be a wife, to be a pastor. The reason we say enough is because you feel you are not enough. But God says to us today, I am enough. I'm enough. If it's not God's timing, you cannot force it. When it is God's time, you cannot stop it. I don't know about you, but I get a little frustrated. I get a bit anxious. I start to doubt. I start to wonder, God, did you really say that? God, can you really do this? Did you really promise that? God, are you going to come through? God, where are you? God, I, I, I know you can. I believe you will. Where are you? There is a tension and there is a struggle. I will choose faith no matter what I feel. I will choose faith. I will lift my hands. I will give thanks even when I don't see it. Even when it's dark and hard. For with God there is always a way. I might be hurting, but in my heart, I choose to trust God. I don't see what I want to see, but because of his faithfulness, I will choose to walk by faith. I don't understand, but I won't give up. But I believe. With everything that's in me, my God is still good. He is still on the throne. He is still on track. He is still making a way. I will worship him. I will honour him. I will give him praise and thanks. What about you? Even in the waiting, I believe that he is good and that his ways are just and that he will be enough for me and I believe he will be enough for you. Wherever you are at today, who's ever watching, who's ever listening this morning, hear this word. I pray this message has spoken to you. God bless you. Amen.